Okay, in chapter 14 we're going to be looking at our defenses and our immunity. And if you remember from 202 when you took it, when we did the immune and lymphatic system, a lot of this is going to be review for you. But first of all, we know that there is an obstacle course for the microbes because the body has these protective barriers that will stop the microbes or deflect them near the body surfaces before they get too far. And an example of this is you have cilia in your trachea that sweeps upward to keep the foreign matter from getting into your respiratory system. Now, some defenses are nonspecific, and those are present at birth. And they will um, just give you some natural defenses against these microbes. Others are more specific and have to be acquired over time. And you've got to have these for complete immune protection. Um, and you get these as you get exposure to pathogens and it'll cause you to have these adaptive immunities. Now innate means non-specific and there are two lines of defense here. There are physical barriers like the keratin in your skin that a lot of things can't penetrate. Chemical barriers like your sebaceous secretions are antimicrobial. And then there's genetic barriers like uh, an example would be a, somebody that has the gene for sickle cell. Well, they're not going to get malaria. The second line of defense that's also innate and nonspecific is the inflammatory sp response, interferons, phagocytosis, and complement. Now, the acquired or specific defenses, that's your third line of defense, and this would be your white blood cells, the B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, and the antibodies. And this is what provides your immunity. This is an overview of the first line, which is innate. It would be your physical, chemical, and genetic barriers. Your second is also innate. Um, phagocytosis, inflammation, fever. And then the third is acquired, which would involve your T and B lymphocytes and your antibodies that you make in response to exposure to these microbes. The host wants to protect the body against pathogens and so the immune system is going to rely on a network of physical barriers that are multi-level. Uh, it's also going to rely on some immunologically active cells and certain chemicals. As we've said, the first line of defense is a barrier that blocks invasion at the portal of entry. It's very nonspecific. The second line, these are protective cells and fluids. It's nonspecific also in its inflammation and phagocytosis. The third you get when you are exposed to the foreign substance and you'll produce protective antibodies and create memory cells that are more specific. Now these lines of defense don't work se separately. They both will overlap and they're redundant in some of their effects. Now looking at that first line of defense, a barrier to th at the portal of entry, this is just a normal part of your body's anatomy and physiology. These are inborn, which means they're innate and nonspecific. And we've said they're physical, chemical, or genetic. And they block the entry of microbes or any foreign agent that is non-self. You've got things like your skin, the outermost layer, you've got the keratin in it and not many things can penetrate that keratin. Also, the flushing effect of sweat. Your mucous membranes that coat your digestive, uh, your genitourinary, and your respiratory tracts help to block the entry of these microbes. Blinking, tear production, saliva. You have flushing effect when you urinate or defecate or vomit. And then, of course, the mucous coat 
it traps a lot of bacteria and keeps it from attaching. And then the cilia that are in your respiratory system that will trap things before it gets down into the lungs. You see there the cilia and they always sweep upward to keep things from getting into the lungs. Now, the chemical defenses from your skin and mucous membranes, you've got sebaceous secretions that are antimicrobial and then other glands are going to secrete antimicrobial substances. Your sweat glands, for instance. You've also got defenses in your tears, in your saliva, and again in your skin. Lysozyme is going to uh, destroy the cell wall of bacteria. Peptides will lyse the bacteria and the fungi. You've got a high concentration of lactic acid and electrolytes in your sweat, and the skin is acidic. So a lot of microbes can't survive in that type of environment. Others, you've got hydrochloric acid in your stomach, and digestive juices and bile are in your large and small intestine. Semen has antimicrobial chemicals, and then there's a normal acidic pH in the vagina. So all of those are going to be defenses, non-specific chemical defenses. Your genetic defenses, um, we're just genetically immune from diseases that other thing animals get, like we can't get distemper, and they can't get mumps from us. Um, viruses are very specific for their host receptors, like there's feline AIDS, and then there's human HIV or AIDS. They're not the same, they're very specific. Uh, also, I mentioned before, if you carry the gene for sickle cell anemia, then you're not gonna be able to get malaria. So these are all examples of genetic defenses. So which of the following is not an example of the immune system first line of defense? First line of defense, it would be inflammation. 